Hi friends, I welcome you to the next lecture and in this lecture we are going to discuss about INDES 41 which corresponds to International Accounting Standard 41 which deals with agriculture. So this standard is basically going to be applied to entities, business entities which are involved in agriculture business. Okay. So if you are doing agriculture business, how to do accounting is what is going to be prescribed by this standard. Okay. Now, we have to first understand few terms and then we will go into the standard. What is biological asset? What is agriculture? So as per the standard, biological asset is a living animal or a plant. In agriculture, we are normally dealing with animals or plants. Okay. So any living animal or plant which is managed in the agricultural activity, it is considered as a biological asset. What is agricultural activity? It is management by an entity of the biological transformation. So what we are trying to do is, we are going to manage the biological transformation of a biological asset. Biological asset is a living animal or a plant. So we are trying to manage the biological transformation of a plant or an animal. For what purpose? So that in future we can harvest it for sale. We may harvest the biological asset. We may harvest the living plant or living animal for the purpose of selling the harvest. Or to generate some agriculture produce from the biological asset. We grow apple trees so that it generates some agriculture produce for us in the form of fruits. So we are managing the biological transformation of the tree so that it generates agriculture produce for me. Okay. And third is for additional biological assets. In agricultural activity, we may manage the transformation of herds of goats. Suppose you are doing goat farming. You want the goats to give birth to additional uh, cubs or we can say uh, the uh, additional biological assets and you want the cows to give birth to calf so that more and more cows can be reared and it will generate you benefits. Okay, So we are trying to manage the biological transformation so that we can harvest it in the future for sale or we can convert it into agricultural produce or sometimes it results in additional biological assets for us. Okay, So agriculture activity is about management of that transformation. Okay. Now, what is biological transformation? Biological transformation comprises of the process of growth, degeneration, production, procreation. So we are dealing with these processes. So biological transformation comprises the process of growth, degeneration, production, procreation and these processes cause qualitative and quantitative changes in biological assets. Okay. Next, what are agricultural activities? Let us see some examples. Raising of livestock, forestry, annual or perennial cropping. Annual cropping means like uh, wheat cropping, maize cropping, rice crops. These are all annual crops. Perennial cropping means forever. You can can use you sow a seed now and you can continue to get a crop for a long period of time. That is called as perennial cropping. Cultivating orchards. Orchards example is you cultivate an orchard of wine or you have apple farms, so that is an example of cultivating orchards, plantations, pine plantation, timber plantations, floriculture that is agriculture relating to flowers, aquaculture relating to fish, including fish farming. Certain common features exist within this diversity, so if you observe these agricultural activities, there are certain common practices which are there, capability to change. Now, if you are doing fish farming, you initially buy very very small fish, you leave it in a pond and these fishes will grow over a period of time, they will become very heavy and then you take the harvest, send it in the market, you get some income. If you are doing uh, wheat farming, you sow small plants and in future these plants will give rise to a lot of agricultural produce. That means they are capable of changing. Okay, So you take any activity, suppose you are uh, doing sheep farming, you buy small cubs, you buy small sheep, and then over a period of time it grows, it grows wool, uh, the size of the sheep also grows, you can sell it for meat and you can also sell the wool which it is generating, that means there is some change which is happening. Then management of change, what the farmer tries to do is he tries to manage the biological transformation, he tries to control the temperature, he tries to provide favorable condition for growth. 
he tries to provide proper nutrient levels he tries to control humidity so he tries to control the environment in which the biological transformation happens okay next measurement of change farmer is very interested or we can say he is always at the lookout to measure the change he wants to see how much the fish has grown or how much the timber trees have grown because based on the growth his income will lie okay based on growth his income is going to be affected hence is always interested in change so if you take any type of these agriculture activity these factors could be found commonly okay next agriculture produce and harvest what do you mean by agriculture produce and what do you mean by harvest let us talk about harvest first harvest is detachment of a produce from a biological asset that means you remove something from the biological asset you detach it from the biological asset example you pick fruits from apple trees you pick fruits from a palm grove okay so that is detachment of produce from a biological asset or cessation of biological asset life process you have pig farm you cut you kill the pig it will give you carcass and carcass is an agricultural produce so harvest is detachment of produce from biological asset or cessation of biological assets life processes now what is agricultural produce so whatever harvest you are getting from the biological asset that is considered as agricultural produce example wool from sheep milk from cows grapes from grape vines wheat from wheat crop carcass of from pigs these are all agricultural produce okay now what are bearer plants let us try to talk about bearer plants so bearer plants are actually within the scope of india 16 now first of all let us try to understand what is a bearer plant and when we discuss about the scope paragraph we know that india is 41 scopes out bearer plant okay now what is a bearer plant bearer plant is a living plant that is used in production or supply of agricultural produce that means it is used for producing agricultural produce or for supplying agricultural produce it is expected to bear produce for more than one period and has remote likelihood of being sold as agricultural produce except for incidental scrap sales that means it is like a machinery which keeps generating agricultural produce for us for more than one year but it is not uh, we can say machinery is not uh, alive but this plant is alive example we have given some examples here some plants for example tea bushes grape vines oil palms rubber trees usually meet the definition of bearer plant are within the scope of india 16 so if you see rubber plants we use we grow the rubber plants and it generates latex for us for a period of more than one year we don't cut down rubber plant each year and sell it as timber or we don't sell it for as firewood that is why it is considered as a bearer plant how are the produce going on bearer plants for example tea leaves grapes oil palm fruit latex is within the scope of india 41 so the bearer plant is not within the scope of the standard but the produce which comes from the bearer plant is definitely within the scope of this standard okay so if you are talking about an apple farm the apple tree is considered as a bearer plant but the apples are considered as biological assets within the scope of index 41 now apple tree how to do accounting index 16 will talk about it till the day the apple tree reaches the maturity age whatever cost has been incurred it will be capitalized and the cost would be amortized or depreciated over the useful life of the apple tree okay So that is the accounting as per India 16. But bearer plant is outside the scope of the standard. But the the produce which comes from the bearer plant will definitely be within the scope of the standard. Okay. Now following are not bearer plants. Let us see some examples. Plants cultivated to be harvested as agricultural produce. So if you are cultivating any plant and it is going to be harvested as agricultural produce, the harvest is considered as agricultural produce. Example: trees grown for use as lumber, or trees which are grown and it is going to be cut down and it is going to be sold as firewood. so the only purpose of the growing the tree is to cut it down and sell it as firewood that means it is not going to generate produce for more than one period then in such case it is not considered as a bearer plant it is considered as a biological asset okay then uh, plant grown for fruit sometimes plants are grown for fruit and also for firewood that means it can be either used as a bearer plant or sometimes it can be cut down and also sold as uh, we can say agricultural produce in such cases it is not considered as a bearer plant annual crops for example maize wheat etc annual crops that means you grow these crops for the purpose of harvesting them and selling them in such case it cannot be considered as a bearer plant okay objective the objective of the standard is to prescribe accounting treatment and disclosures relating to agricultural activity very simple accounting and disclosure requirements related to agricultural activity is the objective of the standard 
So to prescribe how to do accounting for agricultural activity, disclosures related to agricultural activity is the objective of the standard. Let us see the scope paragraph. Now, the standard deals with biological assets which are related to agricultural activity. So, biological assets related to agricultural activity. So, if you are having herds of sheep, herds of buffaloes, you are having standing uh, crops, they are all considered as biological assets. They will be considered within the scope of this standard. Agriculture produced at the point of harvest. Now. You have picked apple fruits from the apple tree. So as soon as you have harvested it, how to measure it at the point of harvest is within the scope of the standard. Further processing is not within the scope of this particular standard. Okay. So agriculture produce at the point of harvest, how to value it in your books of account is within the scope of the standard. Next, government grants covered by paragraph 34 and 35. So specific government grants are covered by the standard. Let us say the government gives you a grant to compensate you for not doing farming in a particular area for a particular period of time. Such government grants are covered within the standard. Or government gives you a grant to do farming in a particular area for a particular period of time. Then in such case, such government grants, how to do accounting will be covered by the standard. Okay. Exclusion. The standard does not apply to certain situations. Land relating to agriculture. You are using some land for doing some farming or for rearing your buffaloes, for rearing sheep, etc. In such case, that land is not covered by the standard, it is covered by India 16. It is considered as an owner occupied property. Bearer plants, plants which are grown to produce, agriculture produce for a period of more than one year, and they are not going to be cut down and sold as agriculture produce. Only in such case, such bearer plants are outside the scope of the standard. Okay. Government grants related to bearer plants. So if you are getting any government plants relating to bearer plants, India 20 will deal with it. Okay. So the accounting treatment for a depreciable asset which is prescribed in India S20, the same accounting treatment will be applied to government grant which is for the purpose of acquiring bearer plants. Intangible assets relating to agriculture activity, if you are using any intangible assets relating to agriculture activity, such intangible assets will be dealt as per India S38, not as per this particular standard. Okay. Let us see some examples, examples of biological assets, agricultural produce, Products after further processing, biological assets, sheep, the agricultural produce is wool and the produce after product after further processing is yarn or carpet. This is outside the scope of the standard. But wool, when it is harvested from the sheep, initially at what value to measure it is recognized within the standard. Fair value of the sheep is within the purpose, within the accounting principles of the standard. So how to account for sheep in the books of account of the farmer is within the scope of the standard. Trees in timber plantation, you have planted a plantation and you are growing these trees for timber. In such cases, the trees which are felled are agricultural produce, products after further processing, logs or lumber. These are outside the scope of the standard, but this is within the scope of the standard. Again, standing trees are also biological assets, they are within the scope of the standard. Dairy cattle, cows which give milk, milk is agricultural produce, it is within the scope of the standard. Cheese after further processing is not within the scope of the standard. Pigs when they are killed, carcass is within the scope, sausages, cured hams are not within the scope of the standard. Cotton plants give rise to harvested cotton, threads and clothing, these two things are within the scope of the standard. Sugar cane, harvested cane, sugar, sugar is not within the scope of the standard. Tobacco plants, picked leaves, cured tobacco, again. So the first two columns are within the scope of the standard but the other are not within the scope of the standard. Rubber trees, latex is the extracted produce, initially when you extract latex, latex how to recognize that extracted latex in your books is prescribed by the standard. How to measure the value of the rubber trees in your books of account. Rubber tree being a bare plant, how to account for it is not within the scope of the standard. Okay, But latex, when it is harvested, you can recognize it in books of account. How to accounting for it is prescribed by the standard. Rubber products, that is further processing, is not within the scope of the standard. Okay. Now, this standard applies to agricultural produce does not apply to produce, produced after harvesting by further processing. So if you have processed the agriculture produce and you have produced some products, then how to do accounting for it is not within the scope of the standard. India S2 will deal with it. Agriculture produce at the point of harvest is measured as per the principles of the standard which becomes cost for applying India S2 going forward. I will give you a simple example of the standard. When you extract latex from rubber trees, you have to measure the agriculture produce at fair value less cost to sell. So when you extract latex from rubber trees, it will be measured at fair value less cost to sell. That is the accounting principle prescribed by India's 41. But in future when latex is processed to rubber, 
latex becomes raw metal for manufacture of rubber cost for manufacturing rubber would now be the fair value less cost to sell so initially latex is recognized in my books at fair value less cost to sell in future this will be addressed cost cost of raw metal which is used for manufacture of rubber I have extracted raw milk from cow I have milked the cow and I have got raw milk raw milk will be recognized in our books of account at fair value less cost to sell in future the milk is processed into cheese, oil, ghee etc in such cases raw material for manufacturing cheese will be considered as milk cost would be the fair value less cost to sell which was recognized at the point of harvest okay so whatever is the value you have allocated to it at the point of initial recognition it will become cost for applying in days 2 in future okay so in this particular presentation we learned what is agricultural activity we learned the meaning of a biological asset we learned what is harvest we learned to which biological asset this standard is applicable and to which assets this standard is not applicable okay so what are the actual accounting principles for uh, the biological assets we will discuss in our next lecture. Thanks a lot.